In this video, we're going to talk about getting more of a full and free release. So if you're interested in getting more distance for less effort, then you'll surely want to stay tuned. Hey, this is Steve with HitItLonger.com. If you've never watched my channel before, then you should know that I am on a journey to hit it longer and straighter off the tee. Not just off the tee, but just be longer, straighter, more pure with my irons all the way into the green because hitting the ball from tee to green with control like that just makes the game so much fun. So if you agree and you want to hit your shots longer and straighter this season, then by all means join us. Hit the subscribe button, like this video if you liked it at the end, and leave a comment down below. All right, so first let's go beyond all the other channels out there and actually specifically define what a full and free release is. That is going from a 90 or maybe a little bit more degree angle of the wrist and the forearms this way, freely around like a pendulum action around to a 90 degree wrist cock on this side of the hands. Again, doing that with an incredible amount of freedom, almost letting gravity kind of take it around and just giving it a little bit of assist by pushing outwards with the wrists, not slowing down at the impact zone, but instead continue to accelerate all the way through to the end of that range of motion of 180 degrees. That's what a full and free release is. Now, a couple of things we now know from all the research that's been done out there. So again, I get all these comments on my channel saying, well, you know, people have different opinions on where the release starts and this and that. No, no opinions anymore is absolute fact now. Number one, that the throwing outwards or the applying of torque to uncock the wrist starts way back here at the top of the downswing way back here you start to throw it you do not wait as it appears on camera wait to get to about here before you start attempting to straighten the wrist it just does not work like that that's uh, one thing that my mentor mike austin was really right about all this time the other thing we know from all the research studies that have been done that your forces to uncock the wrists peak somewhere in this range somewhere in the slot area right about here is where you are putting out the most amount of torque through the grip to uncock the wrists. But what's amazing is between there and here is how the graph drops and approaches zero. In other words, we go from this incredibly contracted state of the muscles to an incredibly relaxed state where we're almost not applying any torque at all. In fact, the club head is moving so much faster at this point than our hands can even apply torque. It's outrunning our ability to torque it forward anymore. Similar to riding a bicycle downhill and you can't pedal fast enough to keep up with the wheels and you might as well just take your feet off the pedals because you're actually slowing yourself down at that point to even try. So Mike was also correct in that. We go from or at least the, the person who was going to hit it the longest is going to go from the most contracted state here to the most relaxed state here. And that has also been proven by science multiple times. Okay, so we talked about going from 90 to 90. Now that 90, because you're not just going to be moving the wrists and forearms only, of course you're also going to be using your entire body. You're going to be shifting your weight over to the front foot. You're going to be turning through the shot, hopefully. So where that full and free release is going to manifest itself, whether you've done it right, is in the key moment right here at when my right arm reaches 2 o'clock. So here's 3 o'clock. If I'm Mickey Mouse on the watch, and you're looking at the watch or the clock, and here's 3 o'clock, and here's 2 o'clock. Now you notice here that the angle between my forearm and the shaft is at least 90 degrees, maybe possibly a little bit more. But if I've gotten the club to here, it means that I have, without impedance, I have taken the club around its full 180 degrees freedom of range, uh, range of motion through the impact zone. So I have not gotten in my own way and not allowed full acceleration to happen through the impact zone. So that's what you're looking for in your follow through. So if you film yourself from face on, you're looking to get the club through the ball and you want to get it into this position here. So I'm still fully extended, almost being yanked out of the socket at my right arm, 
left arm is folding and the right arm is in full crossover over the top of the folding left this way. But I've got this radial flexion of both wrists. Radial flexion is this, and the radial flexion has continued to bring the club around almost past my ear and into this 90 degree plus angle at two o'clock. Now, it's not necessarily that I need to contract the muscles that radial flex the wrist, but instead, I'm just allowing the club head at this point has so much speed and momentum that if you just let it go, it's going to bend your wrist back for you. The only way you can affect that is by getting in the way of it, and that way you would not form this free 90 degrees, but instead you'll be less than 90 degrees at two o'clock. And there are some good examples of, of great, great players out there that kind of get in the way of themselves. So look at Tiger, for example. Let's put up a picture of him in this rough position. We see he's almost got forming a straight line between the right arm and the club shaft. Then you look at somebody like maybe a, a Justin Thomas, and he's only got a little bit, maybe 30 degrees or less, you know, barely any radial flexion back, back this way. Then you look at somebody like a Rory McIlroy. You watch him going through impact. He's actually also subtly impeding the snap of the wrist. It is not as free as it could be. He gets to maybe 45 degrees here. Now compare that with the, to me, the most effortless and free swingers. Uh, currently, Dustin Johnson, if you look at him at this position, most certainly 90 degrees by two o'clock. And then, of course, the king of all the effortless power swingers maybe ever is Fred Couples. So he looks like a jellyfish swinging, and for sure, he does not get in the way of that thrown club head at all, and he ends up 90 degrees by the time he hits 2 o'clock. So those are the guys going from the most impeded release to the freest impeded release. So obviously, you can still make millions of dollars on tour not doing what I'm telling you to do, because it's been done before. Some of the greatest in history have done it that way. However, I think you're going to get to squeeze out a little bit more club head speed, a little more control when you don't get in the way of the club head going through, and instead you freely accelerate it all the way to its full range of motion this way. Um, so those other players, you could say that they're impeding the progress of the club head slightly, kind of getting in the way of its natural penduluming arc, and it might be costing them a little bit of club head speed. So if you want to really max out what you're doing, I would advocate instead that you're going from very freely from 90 degrees of wrist cock or maybe a little more around to 90 degrees or more on this side of the body out in front on the follow through. Let me hit one for you and let's check it out in slow motion and see if I'm able to freely and fully release the head of the club. All right, so looking back at that one in slow motion, you can see, you know, I'm pretty good at it. I got a pretty good angle going here. It looks like I don't quite reach 90 by the time I get to two o'clock. So I've got a little bit of work to do on this and getting a little bit more unimpeded. And you can just hear the swoosh, just making a very effortless swing and getting it around to that 90 plus degree angle at two o'clock. It really makes you swoosh the club at the bottom and really allow you to fully accelerate the club head to the maximum extent possible. So hey, go ahead and film yourself from face on the next time you go out to the range and you're looking at your swing and stop it right about this critical point and then that way you can determine how free and full that you are releasing the club head. And I do advocate that you release it as full and free as possible because I think that gives you the most club head speed and distance, quality of strike, 
than any other method possible. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I'm Steve with HitItLonger.com. Thanks to Golf Development Complex in Moore Park, California for hosting us today. Again, as usual, perfect day out here. Come join me sometime for a lesson. I've put my contact email down in the description. Love to see you sometime. And hey, as usual, I'll either see you in the next video or I'll see you longer and straighter down the fairway. Take good care.